Hi there. Um, so we're back down in lockdown again, aren't we? And uh, I thought as we were, as we're back in lockdown, that I'd maybe start my talks up again so that um, it can encourage you and, uh, and myself actually for doing it. it. Gives me a good discipline to keep, uh, you know, seeking God and writing things down. And also, um, for some of you, it's difficult to get to church because you're vulnerable and you don't feel safe. So that's fine too. And we're going to look at a way of doing some online stuff this week as well. Even though the church is open, we're going to still do, uh, we're going to try and film the service and either stream it live or we will um, just f film it and then send it out in the afternoon. So we haven't quite worked that one out technical details I'll leave that to the people who know anyway this morning um I woke up thinking uh thinking about that passage that was uh, uh being shared around right at the beginning of the first lockdown do you remember the one in 2 Chronicles 7 um this is actually from the message it says if ever if I ever shut off the supply of rain from the skies or order locusts to eat the crops or send a plague on my people like COVID, and my people, my God-defined people, respond by humbling themselves, praying, seeking my presence, and turning their backs on their wicked lives, I'll be there ready for you. I'll listen from heaven, forgive their sins, and restore their land to health. And I was thinking, if ever there was a time that we really need to get back to really seeking God and praying and and uh, seeking his presence and pushing into him for uh, healing of this land is now. Because this has just gone on longer and longer, hasn't it? And uh, I don't know about you, but I never thought that it would go on for this long. And the vaccines are taking a long time to, um, to be uh, given out. And also... It looks like next winter might be a similar thing. So um, I just think it's time to push back into God. Anyway, this morning I woke up with this passage on my mind. Um, and as I looked at the context and of about two chronicles, uh, I, Kevin gave me the message, the applicated, um, the message Bible, which uh, is the devotional Bible. That's why I couldn't think of the name. A devotional Bible. Uh, which has been brilliant and it's really encouraged me to get back in and look at the word and and it says at the beginning uh, of the message you know by Eugene Peterson and he talks about being a friend of God uh, the friendship between Abraham and God in Chronicles 1 and 2 we see that God's people are in danger of losing touch of what made them God's people in the first place um, Israel's confidence and obedience as God's people um, and I'm just wondering is that is that happening now is that perhaps where we are um, while many of us are, I know are feeling afraid and anxious about Covid and the thought that we might catch it and and, and become so ill that we have to go to hospital and um, I think that now is the time to really just press again into God. And I was just thinking as I was saying that, that actually I should update you. If you remember when I was speaking to you last, um, I was talking all about how Kevin's mum at the beginning of lockdown went into a home and we had to do her house up and all the traumas and the fun around that. Well, sadly, on the 21st of December, she died because she contacted um, COVID in her home They'd managed to keep it away for so long and then one of the carers, I think, or one of the people that came in bought it in and she went to hospital and didn't respond to any antibiotics and uh, had pneumonia. So that was a bit of a sad end to a, well, an awful year, really. But anyway, um, Eugene Peterson says, we shouldn't be afraid of God because he wants to be our friend. And that's why he sent Jesus, so that we could know him as person. And uh, and he goes on to say, but God being a friend isn't always cosy and easy. Sometimes in friendship, it can be annoying and you can have fallouts. Um, and after over stupid misunderstandings, quite often, most often the silliest things. And not realising that God always wants the best for us. 
But in order for that to happen, we might need to go through difficult times in order to learn more about ourselves. And that's why it takes us through difficult times. In Proverbs 27, 17, it says, you use steel to sharpen steel and one friend sharpens another. So a friend who is honest and, and true will tell you how it really is and not hold back. And sometimes you won't want to hear these things, but actually, thank goodness you do have friends like that. Uh, I, I know that I have friends like that and I so appreciate it. You know, I could ring them up and say, oh, just had such a bad week and blah, blah, blah. And they'll kind of get it back into perspective and say, you know, well, maybe if you thought of it like this and what about this and maybe you should do this and you come away and you think, yeah, OK, I got the message there. And I'm, I'm glad I've got friends like that, really. I'd rather people were honest than just said things to keep me happy because that doesn't grow us, does it, as people? Eugene Peterson goes on to say, a friend, if they are deeply serious about you, will do things that feel painful, but painful the way a surgeon's scalpel is painful when he does surgery. Uh, in Proverbs 27, 6, it says, the wounds from a lover are worth it. Kisses from an enemy do you in. So the pain has a purpose not to hurt, but to heal, not to detract from, um, but to make, up, make us whole. So this second lockdown seems harder than ever. Yeah, I mean, I've really struggled uh, to see where God is in all of it. And some days I've tried to distract myself as well. I've, uh, uh, unfortunately, really, because this is a distraction, we had a new TV at the beginning of um, December, which was fantastic for Kevin because it made him sit down when he was going through that healing time for his operation. But actually, it's such a distraction because I could waste a whole evening watching TV when I could be just spending time doing something more constructive or spending time with God. <clears throat> but also I find that sometimes when I think, right, I'm gonna have a morning with God, I find myself getting really busy with cleaning and suddenly I have to clean this, per this place or you know, just a room or something because it suddenly becomes so desperate and I end up getting distracted um, or or otherwise I'll look at projects that maybe I could do to make myself less bored and keep me occupied at all times. All of which are great for distraction, but actually not really spending time with God. And for me, it just sends me down a bit of a spiral and I become quite despairing and, uh, and I lose God completely and he goes into the background and then I find it difficult to get back to him. And I think the other thing about this lockdown is that it hasn't helped because we've been in tier four most of December. And so it feels like we've been in lockdown for a month already and now we've got another two months. So tough times. Um, I found that I've been grumpy with God. I've been impatient with him. Um, I've asked him, why haven't you healed our land yet? Haven't you made it? Why haven't you made it easier, Lord? And all those things that, you know, that we probably would say to a friend actually. Um, uh, so anyway, the thing is, the word friend has an ordinary sound, doesn't it? Friend. It's an everyday, it's an everyday thing, friendship. And God wants to be our friend. So for Abraham and God in Chronicles, he had that relationship with God. And, uh, and he found in every day, practical ways to show appreciation and loyalty to God. And he made a point of finding God every day. I wonder, do we make a point of finding God every day as we should, or as we would with a friend maybe? I'm not sure I do every day. And sometimes I have days where I think, mm -mm, well, yeah, yeah, you know, and I'm very, I maybe tick a box and, and uh, have, have a Bible study in the morning, but does it really mean that I'm spending time with God or am I just ticking that box? So Abraham's relationship with God wasn't a dream or an aspiration. It was a true friendship. Friendship is built on meeting regularly, finding out more about that person, checking in on them, uh, sharing our deepest needs, our regrets, when we're fed up, as I was saying earlier. 
And friendships grow when we when we share deeply, don't they? When we talk about our disappointments and our regrets, our hopes and our dreams, when we're real. These are the things that make us who we are. And we want people to, if we want to grow in a relationship, we need to share all the things that are deep in our heart. And friendship is about remembering each other along the, the road of every day. To be able to call or text each other on the spur of the moment and know you're going to get a response. And friendship, in friendship, we remember special days too, don't we? Opportunities to express gratitude, joy, love and respect. And friendship's about being in touch regularly. Abraham was in touch with God. He accepted God's concern for him and in return he made God the centre of his life. He prayed, he believed, he journeyed with God and he was obedient. Abraham wasn't perfect and got it wrong lots of times as we will. But each time God picked him up, dusted him off and kept him company on the road ahead. Because that's what friends do. Let me just read you, I'm just going to read John 15, 11 to 15 and see what Jesus says about friendship. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy and your joy wholly mature. This is my command, love one another the way I loved you. This is the best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. You are my friends. And when you do the things I command you, I'm no longer calling you servants because servants don't understand what their master is thinking and planning. No, I've named you friends because I've let you in on everything I've heard from the father. And that is true friendship. Let me just... Say a prayer for us today. Dear God, thank you that you're a friend, not only of patriarchs, but also of prostitutes, not only of saints, but also of sinners, not only of teachers of law, but also of tax collectors. Thank you that you're a friend of mine as well. Thank you that whenever I stumble, you're there to steady me. Whenever I fall, you're there to pick me up. Whenever I lose the way, you're there to guide me. Thank you for travelling with me on the road of faith, whether a Jericho road, a Damascus road or an Emmaus road. Grant me travelling mercies for the stretch of the road before me today and monuments here and there to mark key moments in our friendship. Amen. Have a great week, guys, and uh, see some of you on Sunday and... And I'm going to be back next week. Bye.